In this equation, uh, in this example, I want to use the method of instantaneous center uh, to determine the angular velocity of this link BC and the angular velocity of this link AB. And AB is going to be uh, A is going to be fixed. Uh, the distance separating A and B is going to be uh, this link length of 0.4, and it's going to be at 45 degree angle. Uh, BC is going to have a link length of 0.4, and it's also going to be on a 45 degree angle. And this piston or block at, at C is moving to the right at 2 meters per second. So let's, let's first look at this link BC, and let's draw a kinematic, uh, kinematic diagram. So here's BC. We know that this length right here, here's B and here's C. We know this length is going to be 0.4 meters. Uh, this angle right here is 45 degrees. And our velocity of C is pointing to the right at 2 meters per second. So what's this velocity of B doing? Well, it's on this curved path, right? And this curved path right here is at 45 degrees. So point B is tangent to this path, and point B, the velocity, is going to be right along this link, which is also at 45 degrees. Just happens to work out for this problem. Now, our next step is to extend a perpendicular line all the way through B. So here's a perpendicular line through B, and we want to extend a perpendicular line uh, through C. And by perpendicular line, I mean it's perpendicular with this velocity right here, right? So our velocity is this way. This angle that this line makes with our velocity is going to be 90 degrees. This angle right here that um, this line makes with our velocity of C is going to be 90 degrees. And this line is going through point B and through point C. It's not at the, the arrow head of this vector. And this point of intersection right here is called our instantaneous center. Now, there's two distances we're interested in. The first distance is uh, from B to the instantaneous center right here. We're going to call this uh, just a, it's going to have a length of RB with respect to the instantaneous center, and this length right here, which is going to be RC with respect to the instantaneous center. Now, how do we figure out these, uh, these lengths? Well, we, we pretty much have to do a little bit of geometry and trig. So, we have to figure out what these angles inside this uh, triangle are, and we can easily figure this out. This is 45 degrees right here. This is 90 degrees right here, so the remaining angle uh, is going to be 45 degrees. Now, I, what, what this, this 45 degrees is really going to the absolute middle of this bar, so it does check out. I know my drawing's not totally accurate, but this 90 degrees, uh, this, this angle right here is 90 degrees, and because this is 45, 90, this needs to be another uh, 45 degrees because we, as we know, a triangle is 180 degrees. 90 plus 45 subtracted from 180 is going to give you 45. Now, how do we figure out this distance right here? Well, if we use Sakatoa, and we're going to look at this is the hypotenuse. We can say that this angle here is the angle we're looking at, and this is the hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent angle. So we're going to use the ka part of Sakatoa. And here we have the cosine of 45 is equal to this adjacent over hypotenuse. Our adjacent is 0.4. Our hypotenuse is this RC with respect to the instantaneous center. And we can rearrange these variables so we get, we, we're solving for this. 
this r distance and we get r of c with respect to the instantaneous center is equal to 0.4 divided by the cosine of 45 and this is equal to 0.566 meters. All right, now I guess we can figure out what this RB with respect to the instantaneous center distance is right now. Uh, if we look at the same 45 degree angle, this is going to be the opposite. This is going to be adjacent. So we're going to use TOA and we're going to have the tangent of 45 is equal to this opposite, which is what we're looking for, R of B with respect to the instantaneous center over uh, 0.4. And we can multiply this 0.4 over, so we get R of B with respect to the instantaneous center is equal to 0.4 times the tangent of 45. Uh, we know the tangent of 45 is just 1, so we get this is equal to uh, 0.4. And of course, it's in meters. So how does this help us? Well, if we remember we have any velocity with respect to the instantaneous center, so the velocity of any point, so let's just look at point B, uh, is going to be equal to the angular velocity, so this angular velocity of BC, times the distance this point is from the instantaneous center. So this will be R of B with respect to the instantaneous center. Likewise, if we look at the velocity of C, it's going to be equal to the same, uh, it's on, rotating about the same bar, so omega BC uh, times the distance C is from the instantaneous center, so divided by uh, RC with respect to the instantaneous center. And what we can do, we sort of have to, the order matters a little bit here because we know what the velocity of C is, the velocity of C. Uh, is 2. It's equal to omega BC times uh, this 0.566. And if we solve, we get, you know, omega BC, our angular velocity of BC is equal to 5.3 radians per second, uh, counterclockwise. So, so this, this is the first part of the problem. Now, we're interested in figuring out, for the second part of the problem, we need to figure out, we need to look at this link right here, so we're going to need the velocity of B. And again, we have the velocity of B is equal to omega BC, so if we, if we take a look at this equation, this is equal to omega BC, so 5.3 uh, times this 0.4. And we have a velocity of B, which is equal to uh, 2.12 meters per second. Now, with this equation, it should be noted that everything in this equation right here is scalar, so there's no ijk components. If we were interested in ijk components, we'd be using the uh, other type of equation we have, which is the relative velocity. So it would be sort of vb is equal to the velocity of c plus this, this omega. BC cross with uh, the distance from R B with respect to C. Uh, in this is just an alternate way of finding this same velocity. So we're not using that this in uh, this example, but this would have your I, your J, and your K components. So so if uh, here's our velocity of B, let's take a look at this link AB. See what's going on with this. So here's our link AB. <laughs> so here's B, here's A. Not. We know B has a velocity like this. And this is equal to uh, 2.12 meters per second. And what's going on here? Well, we know that this distance right here is going to be uh, 0.4 meters. And what is this? This is a rotation about a fixed axis. So we have an equation for this. And it looks very similar to the equation we have uh, for the instantaneous center. 
but we have the velocity of B is equal to, uh, there is no velocity of A because it's a fixed axis, it's not moving, so it's just equal to omega, what's this, AB, times the distance B is from the fixed axis. And this is 0.4, can't forget that. So our velocity of B is 2.12, is equal to this omega AB times this 0.4. And if we solve for omega AB, we're going to get that it's equal to 5.3 radians per second. And this, this is moving uh, this way, so the angular uh, velocity has this direction to it.